So, oh, I was looking at this. I was thinking I was done with Happy these. Friday. <laughs> we're, we're running a little bit late. Okay. So, Mona's here. And the... Oh, if you want to grab some of the Barely Arts. Where did you put it? Um, right there, because it's in boxes. So, it's right to the right. You'll see. To the right. You're right. <laughs> okay. And... Um, so today, um, Mona's going to be featuring the Concord and Ninth Confetti Dots Turnabout Stencil. And um, I, I kind of thought this was really cool, and she loves the turnabouts. But I thought even people that don't do the turnabouts well, like that. could use this. And I see a ton of applications. And so we're running a little bit late because she was showing me all the things that she did with it. And then we got into, like, what did you get in new? And I'm like, oh, I can't show that till tomorrow. <laughs> so so anyways, um, so Mona's going to be featuring this, some of the pace, and I'll go grab some of the other things she's going to be doing. And then um, um, she's going to be talking about the Barely Arts glue. Yeah, and. Know. And she's using some of these paste, but we have a ton of different paste. So I'm going to let Mona start as soon as she unpacks her little container. And I'm going to be her Vanna White if she needs me. <laughs> so enjoy. Good afternoon, everybody. So Sharon Salt told you that I'm featuring this stencil, which... Is a lot of fun. It's what they call a turnabout. However, it's not your standard turnabout. Normally, you'd put, you'd use a jig, you'd lay it out, you'd put it in your misty, and you'd keep on turning your paper. In this case, and I, I, it could go either way. I turned my stencil as opposed to my paper. So I'll show you. This was the the uh, first. I, I'll call it number one. And how I did it was I put it in my mat, and this is the mat by Waffle Flowers, the stencil mat. I could have used the smaller one, but I just like a lot of space so I can pat off my brush and everything when I'm when I'm doing it. Um, just so you know, here's the colors I used for the samples I'm going to show you. So everything's I O, so orchid, sea foam, chartreuse, and they each have their own brush now I know that a lot of people use color families but as I'm working if I use a new ink and it doesn't have a brush it gets its own brush and I also label my brushes now so that I know because you can't you can't use a brush for oxide and then use it for just regular distress there are two different types of inks. They both will react differently. You can't really mix them. Uh, your dye ink will dry until it gets wet. Your oxides, generally speaking, stay set. So I'm, and then and then with my hybrids, which is what I O is, they once they they're not wet anymore, they stay set. So you wanna. Um, just keep that in mind. Now, I know not everybody can do a brush, but if you think about it, I'm just adding a brush every time I use a new color and stencil. Now, I don't stencil a lot, so it'll be a while before I, you know, have a thousand brushes. Once I do that, I'm not sure how I'm going to organize them. But this was um, what I call turn number one. Now, initially, if you can see up in this corner, I had labeled one. I also labeled two, three, and four, so I would know where I was in the turn. However, as I was cleaning this, I realized that <clears throat> it was coming off. So even though I had all corners um, labeled, the only thing that eventually stayed was the one, and that's because lots of times I had it taped. So my, my new thing was to do it on tape, just mark corner number one is the tape corner and then know that I have to turn it. If you're if you're if you think you're you're not sure if you did that side or not, because it's a stencil, if you already repeat if you already did the size, you can see 
the bubbles are there. So I started out with the chartreuse. And then my next color, after I did that, was my sea foam. So if I turn this, you can see it matches up to the sea foam. Now, I mentioned this before when we were stenciling. And what I told you was, let me get out a brush and we'll pretend like I'm stenciling. What I told you was that, <clears throat> whoops, it's the same as the green. We want the blue. Sorry, I got to make a turn there. <laughs> but see, so you could tell right away. Let me lock that into the corner. And there, now we're on the right one. As I was stenciling, I, I, I follow the method of apply, wax on, wax off. So you wax on, you wax off. Because if you don't, and, and because I'm a little off here, you can see the ink's going to catch on these corners when I am wax off. And they're going to catch on this side when I am wax on. So if you want a really good impression when you're stenciling, you should always do right, left, right, left. So just remember that. Go over the whole thing one way, the whole thing another way. Just remember you're going to wax on, wax off. Um, and then you'll catch all edges. All right, so that was number two. And <clears throat> just so you can see the difference. Well, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. So that was number two. And now I'm going to flip it. Again, my paper's still underneath, technically speaking. <laughs> and this is going to be flip number three. Sorry, we want purple. <laughs> Who knows how I flipped it? All right, there's my purple. Okay, so that was flip. <laughs> That would be number three. So now I have the three colors. And, and like I said, you don't really need to number them as long as you know what colors you have down. But for me, because I'm, I'm very easily distracted, I um, <clears throat> have to number things. So that's with three colors. So there's the three colors. And I'm going to set this aside for one minute because I want to show you something. And then... Because these are these are overlaying each other, you want to watch the colors you do to make sure that one's not going to muddy the other. So, you, you know, you don't want to use, let's say, orange and then green because the two don't mix unless you want brown. So just be aware of that. Now, my favorite on doing these is the just the three rotations. So this is the three rotations. And because I wasn't sure what color I wanted to add next, I tried my fourth color as stencil paste. And I used a glitter white. And I don't know, can you see it? Isn't it pretty? I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now I did the full six by six, which is the size of the stencil. So this is a full six by six. Let's get the right side for you guys. This is a full six by six because I knew I could cut it down. So I, I'd rather have it cut down than be too small. So I just went with the full six by six and I can center it, I can off center it depending on how I want it. But this I actually did before I did the one, two, three. And if you notice, see how the blue in, in this one is not really blue like this one? And that's because I thought I had my stencil cleaned off very good, but obviously I didn't. <laughs> so so I had a little buildup, which then rolled into what this should have been, a blue like this, as opposed to like a greenish blue. But, you know, you live, you learn. So so make sure you clean off your stencil good. But um, this probably, the um, white glitter probably dried, and I would say about an hour so that wasn't too bad, I didn't think. And if you want to speed it up, you could probably put a little heat on it. Not too much and not too close, but otherwise it might bubble. So that's with four colors. Um, then I tried gilding paste. So I have my, <clears throat> my green, 
my turquoise, and then the purple is the gilding paste. Now my gilding paste, and I, I brought the purple with me, is pretty old. I don't have the uh, applicator with me because it's drying in the bathroom, but what I ended up doing, it, it's got a, a foam applicator that sits in the lid, which is great because then you never lose it. Because my I've had my gilding paste for a while, um, I ended up having to spread it on with a knife onto my sponge and then go over. You just need to make sure that you're holding your 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 stencil and your paper real well so that as you're spreading that over, because you're spreading with the sponge rather than the knife, um, and, and it actually saves on the, the um, gilding paste. So if you do it that way, then... Um, it might shift, so you, as you're spreading it on, you probably want to hold it down. So that was this one. And then we have, you can see I was having fun. And then just two colors I used with a blue gilding paste. So you can see it. I love that. It kind of reminds me of water, beach, fun, party, you know. So I'm not sure what I'll do with all these backgrounds, but <laughs> I'm going to have, I know one of them's going to be a shaker. Not sure. It'll probably be the one with the uh, uh, white glitter paste, but I know one of them is going to be a shaker. So there's this. So, I mean, a lot of fun, um, easy to do. I do like using this, this silicone uh, stenciling mat from Waffle Flowers. It, it, you see, it's not moving. You know, everything will move with it. And your paper really doesn't shift either unless you apply a lot of pressure. So I just like to put it in the corner. It's just easier. That way you don't have to worry. But like I said, in this case, you could do it either way, but I, I found it easier to leave the paper down and just rotate my stencil and make sure you clean it between each rotation. Now, some ink is harder to get off than others. And if you have, you know, um, an ink, fluid or somebody told me something about be gone or something like that that you could use with this but i'm pretty sure we have ink cleaning solution in the store somewhere which works great on these and it also cleaned off my mat so you wouldn't believe what the mat looked like before now when i stencil just just a reminder you want to go wax on wax off or left circle right circle once I ink it up, you know, I'll dab it in the ink or I'll run it across. I usually dab it a couple times on my mat, and then I start. So you don't get that one huge glob. The The difference between using inks and using your pastes and stuff is that your inks are going to be a little variable when you do it, unless you're, like, using the Tim Holtz Distress. Then you'll probably get a nice, nice, even perfect like stamped image when you're using it but when you use um, other inks especially your dye base they dry pretty quick so you want to work that over and over again so you get pretty much a consistent if you look here we'll bring it back up you can see there's a there's a variation in my green dots and that's because um, IO is a hybrid and when it dries, it dries, so it's kind of hard to blend it in. But still, I love the effect. So this is a great, great stencil. You can use it over and over for all different kinds of backgrounds. And I did make one more, which is how I'm going to show you about the Barely Arts glue. Sharon got the Barely Arts glue in. This is a mini. Let's see if I, if I can get off the wrapper. I'll show you what the mini looks like. If I can, I'll just, it's on pretty good. But in every mini, so the mini is smaller than this one. It's like this tall. Uh, but in every order, like this is the big one here, or this might be the rear full, I'm not sure. But this is the larger one. This is the mini. And both, you get this tube. So... When it comes, it has a, a solid lid on it, just a plain old black lid. It doesn't have this on it. But inside the packaging, you also get this thing to attach your needles. Your needles screw on and screw off, just like that. Very easy. Screw on, screw off. What's in here is the fine stainless steel pin. 
Now I've seen some people say that their pen has discolored their ink. A stainless steel pen, and I know this for a fact because my husband is a metal fabricator, um, does not discolor, does not rust. So if you have a pin in there and it's not one of the barely arts and it's discoloring, it is not stainless steel because stainless steel does not discolor. So once again, you also, besides getting this lid to attach your, um, your applicators, you get a tube that has an adapter Um, this is your, your fine tip, which is what I always use. I hope you can see it. There, I'm going to move it here so I can see it. So that's your fine. And I'll put the other one next to it. One second. And this is like the ones if you use the, um, oh, what kind of glue is it? The Nouveau glue. This is sort of like the nose you'd have on that. So it's a wider, so you could, you know, do a bigger area. And then if you want a huge area, you could do this. Oh, wait a minute. This might be the seal. I'm sorry. Let me just see. Yeah, this is the seal. So if you want to switch your nozzle out and seal it, you can use this. You could also put the cap on if you're not going to use it all the time. But So you get all three of these along with, and this is the most important thing to me, the stainless steel pin. Um, I have to figure out a way where I remember where I've laid it down because <laughs> it seems like I'm like, oh, where's the pin? But this pin is wonderful. I don't know if it'll work in any of the other uh, glues you have, but um, the pin is wonderful. I leave mine with the pin all the time. Um, I don't take it out. This is the one I use on a semi-daily basis. And... Every once in a while, I'm not going to lie, it does clog. So I just take the needle out, put the needle back, and go like that. And then we're good. They also sell, um, but I find it kind of gets in the way, they sell a little cap that you can attach uh, and put over that. But I just leave the pin in, and it's perfect. Love this glue. Works great. I've used it on wood, paper. Once it's sealed, it's sealed. So um, I know everybody's got a million glues, but I have been using this glue now for three years, and um, it's the only glue I use. So if you're interested, you know, and you want to talk about it some more, fine, let me know, but this is great. So that's what we're going to put the card sample together with that I brought. And Barely Arts and Sharon's got it, and I say, yay! So hang on one second, and we'll get the other stuff. I just want to put all the tubes back where they belong. It's nice that they give you this little tube to just hold everything in. I kind of try to save my my pin in case I truly, truly lose it instead of misplacing it. So that's that and that. And now we're going to make a card. So the last set I made on the Concord and Ninth well, second to last set I made on the Concord and Ninth was this this one here. So I, I did my same um, chartreuse and then uh, seam foam, sea foam. And then because, like I said, I only like three colors, this time I embossed. Now, I didn't do the greatest job because <laughs> un unknown to me until now, you live, you learn, is that your um, Versa Magic does not spread very well. So as I'm doing my wax on, wax off, I'm like, I don't know if it's getting it. And then, so I finally just took the whole pad and pressed it into the stencil. So I, I ended up with this. Now I did shift it a little, and some of them I wasn't too worried about because they weren't, they weren't going to be part of the card. So then I cut this section out. So I have this, and it's, I think this is four by five and a quarter probably, you know, a standard mat. And I use the waffle flower um, set to do that, which is, well, 
I know I hid it out, but who knows where it is now. Oh, wait a minute. I found it. There it is. So it's this one. Now they have, just like Spellbinders did, they have an A set and a B set. The A set starts out at five and a half by four and a quarter and goes down an eighth of an inch each time. The other layer starts uh, an eighth of an uh a sixteenth of an inch less, so you could have another matting. So there is a uh, waffle flowers layer A die, and a waffle flower layer layer. Um, I don't know if they call it additional or B, but there is two sets, and they work together if you want a thinner margin. Um, Sharon's famous for thin thin margins, and sometimes when you're cutting, it's hard. But that's why these are so nice. So this is the set I used for this mat. And then we're gonna glue this on the front of the card. So it's gonna go like this, evenly framed. Now on this one, I'm not gonna use my Barely Arts glue uh, because I like tape on the front. And I've probably been doing this for, oh, at least 10 years, if not more. Uh, I put the tape around the edges and I also put one diagonal. I never rip all my tape off once. So this one will be my starter. So I, I, it's right here, and I know it's gonna go down to this corner, and I'll lay it on and make sure I have it lined up where I want it first. And that looks pretty good. And then I'll pull this off, and now I have it where it's supposed to be. And then what I do is I just flip back the corners opposite corner of where the diagonal left. Otherwise you can't pick up the corner. And press it down. Um, um, because I, I have a tendency to uh, look at things and then say, ooh, that wasn't right. Um, I never ever pull my glue off, my tape off all at once. I know some of you are brave, not me. <laughs> I do a little at a time until I know it's set. All right, so now we have that on. And I did use, Another die, oops, just knocked something on the floor. This one from Concords and Nines, uh, Good Vibes. So that's what this one is. And we're gonna put that on the card. Now, I have vellum here, which we'll do after we assemble the, the letters. Now in this particular one, it's stacked three times. And this is where your uh, glue will come in handy. This barely arts with the Vero Fine tip. I already put two together, and now I'm going to put the the silver on. Whoops. You can dot it on, but it's got a nice fine line. And I don't know about you guys, but if I ever over glue, and sometimes I do, um, I just pat it on my work surface until it's got less glue. So now that I have that on, I'm gonna match up. Sometimes I match up the first letter, sometimes I match up the middle letter, but use your fingers as a guide. Let them guide you to how that's supposed to be because you can feel that they're going together. So if you can see, I got a little there. And I'm, I always try to be careful because the um, mirror paper tends to show everything. So I got that. Now in this particular die, oops, let's fix it up a little. And because I'm using this glue, I have a couple, you know, I have like 10, 15 seconds in order to readjust if I don't like how it is. I usually check on the back too. It looks pretty good. Okay. So that looks good. Because there actually was an eye in this die and um, <clears throat> It kept on falling out. I thought, oh my God, it's so tiny. I, I pre, whoops, I knew where this was gonna go. So I, I pre did my eye. So it's gonna go sort of like this when it go, goes on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is glue these two together. Um, whenever I'm gonna put layers or something, especially with words, I like to double them up at least, if not triple them up sometimes even more depending on what I'm going to do. You don't want it too high because see how those thin lines are? You don't want 
too many layers if you're going to mail it. If you're not going to mail it, if you're going to hand deliver it or it's a sample in the store, you know, put four layers on if you want. It doesn't matter. All right, so now I got that ready. And we'll put this on. We'll line it up. Lots of times um, I'll use a different color for one of the layers. Uh, if, especially if I'm using metallic paper because it doesn't really matter and metallic sticking to metallic sometimes can be a real pain in the butt. So there's that all's ready. So it's much sturdier when you double them up and like I said I do I, I do that a lot I double them up. So now I used vellum for the backdrop for this and the reason I used vellum is because I, I, I didn't want it to be the focal point. I wanted the dots to be the focal point along with the saying. So before I, I glue this onto the vellum, I'm going to put this little square, which is included in the die, onto the card. See how nice it goes on? Flows so nice. And then we'll put that on. And now I have a little time to shift it to where I want it. Looks like it's a pretty good frame. Okay. And now I'm going to do the, um, you know what, I think I'll do the this next. Now, vellum is, is sort of like acetate when it comes to liquid glue. So stay away from the direct edge and just dot your letters. Don't do not do like a line, just dot them. And I, I think you'll get a better result and it won't smear all over the place. So you can see we're dotting it on. I'm not a good dotter, but Okay, and now, actually, I'm going to flip this over so I can see the vellum better. There, and we'll put this on. And because it's the liquid glue and I dotted it on and I tried to stay, not too bad. I did a pretty good job. Got a little blowing here. You can take your pick or whatever or use your finger to pick up the excess glue. I think we got a pretty good margin there. Okay, I, I do believe I want to pop this too. So I brought some tape so we can pop it a little. Uh, I think the very last thing I put on is going to be the vibes. So let's see, my Taylor strips should work. I love these Taylor strips. I do believe that... Um, Concord Ninth is coming out with strips too, and their strips are longer. I don't know what their depth is, but I did see something about them coming out with strips. So now I can apply my strips wherever. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to make sure that the. Um... Sorry, I'm looking for my scissors. Now. There they are. I have this pouch, but. I'll trim this off before I get to the vellum. Good. And I think I'm going to put three steps, steps there, strips there, because it'll make it firmer. My scissors no longer like to cut sticky stuff. And this one we can put right here. And then I'll take another strip. And we'll do letters just so we're nice and firm there see they work well these these small strips between these particular letters so I love them And we'll do a little 
Sí. Before I actually stick it down, I'm going to make sure from the other side that it's not showing. Put that in. So is everybody enjoying this nice hot weather we're having? And did you have a good 4th of July? Got to go to my son's new house. It was nice. He did a great job fixing everything up. <laughs> sticking to my one finger there. Oh, still sticking. Oh, that's because I was using the wrong side. <laughs> Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll just use this little piece right here. I'm trying to figure out where the sticky side is. There we go. We'll use that right there. One more piece, small piece for the Y just to keep it stable. And I think we'll be good. Okay, so this is how it's going to go on. Um, the other thing that I know, I know I've told you about is my powder, the old-fashioned one. Now, this would probably work with the brush one, but not so well with the tailored expression one. The tailored expression one I've now put permanently in the drawer bin with my embossing powders because that way... It's there when I need it to um, do my, whoops, my um, embossing. I don't have to look around for it or remember where I put it or anything like that. I, I do this because um, if, you, if you have sticky stuff, it, it, after a while, especially if people touch the card a lot, it kind of gets gritty on those edges. So that's why I go around them, make sure it's not going to get all gritty. All right. And now we can peel this off. And actually, you don't have to peel them all off if you don't want to, uh, because they're, they're they're actually just there for padding. Uh, I'm peeling them all off, but lots of times I'll leave the middle ones unpeeled. And the reason I'm peeling mine all off is because the card's going to stay in the store, so um, I don't want anything to happen to it. I should check the other side first. Whoop. So that looks good. You can't see it. So I'm good to set that down. Uh, I do believe that's about centered. There. And now I'll put on my vibes and we'll be all done. So once again, I'm using my Barely Arts. Now, when I leave it laying around without a, uh, the pin in it, I just kind of grab the end and pick off what's on the tip that dried a little. And again, I'm just going to dab. I know that I'm not going to get all the V on, so I'm not going to put ink, I mean, sorry, glue there. Oops. I probably should use my tweezers, but all right. Matter of fact, I'm going to just to help me. So I'm going to grab it right there. And now we're going to, whoops, just dropped it. And we're going to go like Back a little there. Kind of pick up the rest of the goof. My fingers. Get that mirror paper clean. And there's my card.
using the Concord Ninth and it's the Turnabout Stencil, different inks, and this one cute little set. Like I said, I will be making more cards, but I wanted to show you how nice the Barely Art glue is. And I know that some people have trouble getting the pin in, and if I put my finger right like that, the pin goes in. If you get too much glue on the pin, it only goes so far, you just pull it out, go like that to dry it off, and then put it back in. I really have less problems putting this needle in than I have on any other glue. So I love it. Uh, the other nice thing about it is, um, I know a lot of people use Art Institute. The other, it dries clear, it dries quickly. The other nice thing about it is, this is all season. So if you live someplace cold, you know, like the Art Institute, they can't ship in the winter because it freezes, it loses its uh, consistency. This will not. So this can be shipped all year round, used all year round, it doesn't matter. So. Hope you like it. Any questions, give us a call. And thank you. And Sharon will see you tomorrow morning. Have a great evening. Bye.